Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Captain Man the Invisible Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sad name now. Ergo, Swissman15 and Captain Invisible, as you just heard, laugh and hello. say... And say hello. Yeah, my line. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're just introducing um, Captain's New Rules and a tournament that we're announcing together. Together. That, okay, you're just gonna... Go with that. Um, so basically, yeah, I'm, just gonna, I, I'm just gonna copy. Yeah, I'm just gonna copy what you say. That's, that, <laughs> that's how I roll. <laughs> yeah, he he's like he's like my mini me. Um, <laughs> so basically, <laughs> we're gonna have a tournament that follows Captain Invisible's new rules. It's gonna be two v two tournament, uh, probably like eight teams or so. Uh, we'll explain more about that in the second half. But first, we'll go over the rules that we sort of finalized, quasi. Quasi, yeah. Uh, just to point out as well, um, the tournament, I am still sort of figuring it out, so don't sort of jump on the bandwagon straight away. It's, we, you know, we need to get the rules sorted and make sure everyone's happy with the rules, and then we shall discuss dates and things for tournaments. So, yeah, don't worry if you're watching this and going, oh crap, you know, I have to get you know, to this tournament. It's it's not going to be for, for at least some time. I need to sort of stuff out. <laughs> yeah, what we'll do anyway. is probably um, over time we'll just like do test out the rules, see how it goes, make corrections, and then we'll bring you back when we have both the teams and the final set of rules, probably. Yeah, definitely there's some testing involved, but as I say, we're, we're looking in the future to do a tournament with these rules, so uh, at least now, you, now you're going to know the rules, you'll at least get some, be able to get some practice and such. All right, so uh, we can start with the rules. What we are trying to do, or well, Captain thought of really, which was uh, kind of really smart, was um, to divide it into like the different types of units. So you have to have lower quality units along with the higher quality units in an army and such. Yeah. So basically, it it forces you to sort of it restricts your elite forces into a, sh a smaller space and forces you to use maybe some of the lower quality units that you didn't think to you know, didn't think to bring because they're obviously low quality but this will force you to bring those and hopefully fill your army with cheap fodder <laughs> yeah because uh, the nobles were not the uh, entirety of the european population they could barely make up half Absolutely. not even half they're like four percent tops and uh, Absolutely, yeah they were uh, yeah no, in short them. supply as it were <laughs> yeah, so uh, what we basically did was, based on my historical backing, which might not be completely reliable, is that we divided um, the units into three categories, either elite units, which are all the no high nobles, uh, middle units, which are low noble type units and wealthy merchant middle class type people, and then levies, which are peasant militias and such. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, happen? so we're using a, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna be using Hungary as an example just to show you what we mean by this, and it will hopefully give you an idea of what what the different factions have in terms of their higher quality, mid quality, and low quality units. So, do you want to uh, start us off, us, man? Yeah. So we divided them into three uh, levels. You can see the top levels, the all the elite examples, and so on and so forth downward. So, like the elite examples would be the Royal Bandrium, Hungarian Nobles, Dismounted Feudal Knights, Battlefield Assassins, Dismounted Shuffling Knights. They all have a lot of armor, a lot of training, and they're not that common, so you can't... And you'll get, you can get a maximum of six of these units. Yes, yeah, so that's a maximum of six. You can either have six, uh, all six cavalry, you can just take all, all six mounted knights and be we're rushing around the battlefield with your heavy knights, or you could maybe just have all six foot you know, footmen and just have a, a huge you know, foot car of heavy knights or you could maybe just split them uh, I think splitting them would probably be wiser but you know people are each to their own and all that so and uh, as Captain was pointing out the uh, order units so battlefield assassins knights templar knights hospitaller those count as elite units but they also are restricted to one of their own so you can have one, e one order unit in all of your elite so one of the six. Yep. Yeah, so you can either bring the Battlefield Assassin, and that's that's it. You know, you're not allowed to bring Templars then, or Hospitallers, or you could decide to just bring the 
just being an extra, basically an extra cav, cav unit, but it will class towards your elite slot, so if you, you you can't then say, oh I want an, a Templar unit and add it as a 7th slot, it has to be part of those 6 elite units. And uh, so for the next level we have the uh, hired type units which are low nobles and middle class and mercenaries and such. And we have for that examples Pavi spearmen, which are like armored sur um, armored surgeons. Excuse me, Pavi's crossbow militia or Pavi's crossmen at all. Crodax men, hussars, and Magyar cavalry. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So uh, as <laughs> so as Swissman said, yeah, these are going to be uh, middle quality sort of men at arm quality units. So they're going to be they're going to be sort of the the probably the main core of your army you know you're probably not going to be able to afford too many knights so you're going to want to use these to to fill in the uh the main core of your army and as as Swissman pointed out armored sergeants will be classed as uh as men at arms as well so sort of the middle tier uh class um along with these pavy spear spearmen so uh, any unit that's kind of a little bit of quality would be classed under this uh, under this mid tier uh, ruling. Yeah, anything that has like a little bit of armor or training, those are the middle. They're not exquisite, but they're not anything. And you can get six of these units. I mean, ten of these units. Excuse me. Ten yep. So you can either bring again ten. Uh, I don't know why you would, but ten <laughs> hussars. You know, if you want to just spam ten hussars, <laughs> it'd be expensive, but you're more than welcome to try it. Um, <laughs> Or you could bring sort of a mix of five Hazars and five Magyar Cav if you want to go a bit crazy with the Cav. Or as I say, you can just uh, split, split, sort of divide it across your your units. You know, you can have a, a nice core of spearmen with maybe a couple of uh, maybe not even cross. Maybe you don't even want to bring Pavi's crossbow men because you, you'll have access to cheaper crossbow men later and just. Just being a core of spearmen with some cavalry to support your heavier knights, maybe. Yeah, and uh, then we go to the final class, which is all the levy classes. You can bring four or any any amount of them, any amount you want. Probably going to be four since you want the higher qualities first, but any amount you want. And um, they can be like Bosnian archers, crossbowmen, spear militia, Slav levies, Transylvanian peasants. And there is some like. Uh, vague area between these areas. If you have swordsmen militia, which are available to the Spanish, those are definitely a more hired part because they have armor and stuff. But uh, if you take any sort of um, low quality units like Trebizond archers, even though they have long range, they are a lower tier. So you can save room on that based on those. Yeah, because these uh, Bosnian archers, they're, they are actually quite effective and I think they've got quite a lot of armor for for such a, a cheap unit, but they they are held in the levy reserve simply because they are a lower quality archer unit anyway, uh, despite the stats. Um, also, before before I sort of forget and before we get past it, um, I know Swissman pointed out that you may want to use up all your men at arms slots, you know, sort of the full ten, but because the money is going to be quite low, you're actually probably not going to be able to use up all of them. On your higher quality men at arms, so the um, the e expensive hazards that that's going to cost you a lot anyway. So you might not be able to bring a lot of hazards before you've used up your money reserve anyway. So you're going to be forced to use levy units regardless of whether you bring the full ten uh, men at arms class or whether you decide to uh, to skimp out on the men at arms class and maybe upgrade some of your cheaper units. It, it forces you to think about about it, does the uh, money value. Yeah, so in, uh, basically you're going to have to use a lot of discretion when choosing units, uh, like which is what class. Anything that's a knight, you're like, okay, that's probably elite. Just use your best judgment. I mean, you make a mistake, oh no, but for all intents and purposes, we are going to try and make it so it's... Uh, bit defined level so they have a giant mixed army a very diverse army and that's like the rule set yeah and honestly guys if you're confused by anything don't hesitate to ask it's much better for you to ask um, the person that's hosting and have them say yeah that's okay or agree with you 
rather than you just jumping in and going right i'll just bring this unit and then have it break the rules so you know, just just make sure that your the other player is happy with what you've decided and if you're both happy it doesn't matter whether you you've accidentally broken the rules you're both you're happy with what what armies you've, you've brought all right so let's just sum up the rule set so overall you can get six elite 10 hired middle type units and then any amount of the lowest units that you want in addition we said no musketeers any musketeer units and a maximum of two artillery is there anything else um no i think that's it um we want to keep it fairly simple just for now because it's a new rule people are gonna have questions obviously so it, it just keeps it nice and simple for you guys just to um just to train with and use and um, hopefully you know we can spread this around because i've had some great reviews from people in the past you know uh, the swedish language and elite legionarii have both shared their uh, their your know, happiness with the the rules so yeah if uh, if you guys test it and uh, also appreciate the rules uh, let me know because as i say i'm hoping it'll be quite a popular uh, rule set for the future yeah, I, I mean, I, we just played a battle, and I did like using it, especially the serpentine. <laughs> it gave me an excuse to use it. <laughs> and um, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Artillery is not used very often, and you kind of see why. But at the same time, your know, European armies did sort of trail artillery pieces across battlefields. I mean, you only have to look at some some recent, some of the sort of more recent historical battles that uh, Elite has put up, like the. Uh, the siege of Vienna to see that even though it was a failure on a siege part, you know, uh, Solomon did try to bring his artillery across the entire stretch of uh, Hungary. So it, it did happen. They did bring f uh, field artillery, but it just wasn't very common and wasn't used a lot early in the early periods. Yeah, so uh, I think General's bodyguard would count as like uh, an, an elite unit, definitely. Since there's six of them, you don't want to have any discussion between if someone doesn't get a general's bodyguard and then they have, hey, seven elite units. So general's bodyguard would probably be uh, one of those elite ones, just be, just to clear it up, because I was confused about that before. before. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna mention the general's bodyguard in my previous video that I was I was gonna force people to use a general's bodyguard, and then I thought, well, to be honest, the general's bodyguard is the best place for him anyway, so. I won't force people to use it, but I'll sort of say, look, it's the best place for you, General, anyway. But I do agree, actually, that if you used up an elite slot, then that would that would work out in these rules. So, yeah, the General's Bodyguard would class as an elite unit, and it doesn't matter whether you put him in a General's Bodyguard unit or a, just a heavy knight, then, because he's going to take up a slot regardless. Yeah, so... Uh in essence, these rules that we listed are going to be used for the tournament, which we're going to make, and we'll actually be competing on a team. We'll be Captain Man the Invisible Swiss. <laughs> it's going to be uh, a 2v2 tournament, uh, each individual knockout style, I believe. We'll give you the details once we get the teams, but I think we're going to look for about eight teams or so, maybe more. We'll see how many sign up. Um, yeah, but... certain... Go ahead. I mean, certainly, I want to... Um, I want to get the rules set first but yeah we are looking for players so if if you're interested just uh let us know and we'll uh we'll share we'll let you know the rules and then you guys can even take that with you and sort of get into um get into training for the battles i mean i say i want to see as many people as possible play with these rules so you're uh at least if you're joining the tournament you'll at least have to play a few of the <laughs> the games with the rules so yeah, so if you're looking to join, just uh, I want you to comment with uh, your geographical location, like continent, time zone area, um, your team name, and the team players that are in it. So, like, for example, I would say um, Captain Man the Invisible Swiss, Swiss Man 15, Captain Invisible, and say North America slash UK, because that's our locations and such. Or not. Yep, so, um... <laughs> so many pauses between when I stop because like I should let Captain talk. <laughs> yeah, we have to let each other talk because we're both uh, very uh, talkative. I think, like interrupting each other. And obviously, I'm the more important one. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> no, Captain's very important. You better be he, kidding. 
he, he's England and Britannia. He's the most important person on the entire campaign. Absolutely. I'm <laughs> also the biggest target as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in anyway. another point. So, uh, yeah, yeah um, that's... the rules were simple. Six elite units, ten middle units, and then any amount of the lower units. Uh, those will be used for the tournament. Uh, no musketeers, max two artillery. There's no max cav, by the way. And uh, if you want to join, just uh, comment like I said, and we will be marking you down and tell you if you get in. Before we finish, <laughs> I think Swiss man's missed out an important uh, thing, as as I've missed out actually as well. Uh, money, money for the battles. Oh yeah, God. Ooh, that's a loud noise. <laughs> yeah, money. my apologies. Um, because of the way that these armies work. Um, as I say, you don't want to spend all your money on the middle class uh, units. That's because the mon money is either going to be 10k or 12k. Now, I might le I might bump it up to 12k for the tournament. I think 12k um, is better rules... because with the test army yeah. that I with the test battle I just did, I had just enough for a full army and one or two upgrades, not many. So I think 12k would be best. Yeah, 12k, I've found that you can actually you have a couple of upgrades and a full army list. Even if a lot of that, that army is going to be militia units, you're still going to have you know, a fairly sizable army. Whereas 10k, it's it's hard to build, even with militia units, a decent force. So, But uh, certainly 10k works with these, uh, with these rules. And um, I highly suggest that you try out 10k as well. But I think 12k will work for the tournament uh, a lot better. So if you want to practice for the tournament, uh, once you sign up and all, you can practice with your teammate and all, just um, if you want to practice, use the rules of 6 elite, 10 middle, anything in the bottom, uh, 12k, no musketeers, and max 2 artillery, and then enjoy. Yep, and you've got plenty of time to practice, guys. Don't, don't feel rushed. Uh, as I say, these these rules were literally made today. I've literally <laughs> <laughs> I sent out a video uh, this morning that like explained them all. So yeah, don't feel rushed. We're all we're all getting into them. So just have fun, and we shall announce the sort of the beginning of the tournament once we've had a few people join and uh, we've given them enough time to practice. All right. So um, yeah, yeah. Uh, enjoy trying to beat Captain Man the Invisible Swiss, the unbeatable team that has been beated. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we've ever... Funnily enough, we've never been on a team in a tournament, which I find shocking. Well, I mean, <laughs> I met you halfway through the uh, clash of teams. Really. I didn't really talk to you before that, I think. So, um, But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and I would say goodbye now, unless Captain has said anything to say. Uh, yeah, I would like to say goodbye before Swiss man. Oh, you know what? I said it first. <laughs> you lose.